Well, 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 could we be on the move as early as today's episode? If you didn't see the last one, we made our plan for the rest of this save. You can find the episode in the eye above to find out exactly what's going on, because today could be our final episode in charge of Helsingborg. Let's go and find out if it is. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, Rebuilding Helsingborg, with me, Daniel. It's part 18 today and it could well be our final one because we are back just a day after leaving off in the last episode. And spoiler alert, we've got a job interview. If you want to find out how we get on and whether we're offered a job in today's video, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily FM22 content. You can find all the key links, including our top three playlists, the Twitch channel, football podcast and merchandise store in the eye above. And you can also support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below. But we have got a lot to get through today. Those of you that were here last time out, you're going to get your spoilers now if you weren't. We made our plan for the rest of this save and I think we've become a little bit frustrated by Swedish football and certainly by the other clubs in the nation. We've got no consistency at the top of the division and the best sides not really improving. That theme has continued in the last week of the transfer window. As a result, we're looking to spread our wings and expand our save as we move out to rebuild the whole of Scandinavia. And almost want to turn it into a rebuild slash glory hunter and try and win all of the top divisions. That would be a lovely way to finish before the end of the year. If we get the job we've applied for though, that could be quite difficult because it is one hell of a rebuilding job. The team that we applied for in the end of the last episode couldn't afford our compensation. They were semi-professional and bottom of the second tier with not a lot of hope of surviving. But we are going to give it our very best shot if we get off of the job. So let's go ahead to the inbox. We've got an interview to start with, and then maybe we'll get to see a final game on camera with Helsingborg, which could be putting them in a cup final for the second year in a row. So let's go to the inbox. The spoilers are incoming. We have got an interview of Fremad Amager. Again, apologies for the pronunciation. It's going to be a pain if we get the job, isn't it? But we've got an interview. It's a job currently held by Peter Lovenkrantz, the former Ranger striker in real life. But here he's got the sack. They are at the bottom of the second tier and they're in big trouble. To give you a little bit of perspective as to where they are before we head to the interview, they are 12th place in the league. So there's 22 games, then it splits and they play another 10, two against each other in the bottom half. They're on eight points, 10th place are on 19, the bottom two go down. So we're talking catching 11 points in 12 games. By the time we get the job, it's probably 11 games, might even be 10. So could be a very difficult one to take on. But the third tier will be loaded, so we can take it if we need to. Let's go and head into the interview, though. It's a big moment for us. Joshua Wallace, the owner. Sounds like a British name. I wonder if it's a compatriot. Let's go and have a look. If we go through the staff in, no, it's an American owner. No staff I recognise, really. Mostly Danish, one German as the under-19s manager. But let's go and get through the interview. I'd like to hope that we wouldn't struggle to get this job, but we'll wait and see. There's a few questions we'd like to ask to see if you're the manager to take us forward. Let's get started. Are you worried about not being able to speak the language? Absolutely not. Where's the football is a universal language? I always love that one. Do you think it's a positive or negative thing that you've just managed one team? There isn't much loyalty left in football, but I think it reflects well on me that I've shown plenty of it. Lovely answer. You've previously embroiled in media controversies, not getting the support of your players. I would say probably in this save more than any, we've not had trouble with that really. We haven't had a huge amount of unhappy players. So I'm going to say, yeah, we'll have a positive atmosphere here. You're potentially replacing someone who did not have a good relationship with our fans. Can you do better? Of course I can. Uh, why are you the right manager to lead a team expected to struggle against relegation and has been stuck there all season? Uh, I'm going to say it's either I've got the passion, fight and spirit or motivating is my strength. I think I'm going to say I've got the passion, fight and spirit required, but then I'm, am I promising to avoid relegation then? So I think we'll go for the safe answer at the top. Motivation is my strength. We want to know when you intend to establish yourself. So that's interesting. Could I join at the start of the season rather than having a relegation on my CV? It would give me a chance to win the Swedish Cup as well, but no, I'm going to do it immediately. 
let's have a real go at surviving. How do you feel about working with director of football, a Jacob Gregerson? He is not bad, actually. I expected worse. I'm happy to work with him. What sort of budget do you anticipate needing to put together your backroom team? I'll work with what you've got. And what are the expectations? We're not being judged this year. And then I guess from next season, it'll be expected to win the league. But other than that, there's not much for us to really reflect on. If we attempt to remain in the division, we're expected to be relegated. There's not many semi-pro teams at that level. So that's acceptable to me. Uh, we're not expecting anything of you this season. We'll discuss next season's objectives later. That's fine. Uh, do you have anything we should consider? Can we have a parent club? Okay, that's fine. We'll move on. I've got nothing further to request. Thank you for coming. We'll be in touch. Cross your fingers. Maybe a job offer on the way. Let's go and get ahead, though, to the next day where we face your gardens in a Swedish Cup semi-final. Could be a lovely way to finish our time, as we thought it might have been last week. And of course, leaving Helsingborg in a Swedish Cup final would really be a lovely achievement. Let's head to tomorrow and match day. Maybe we get a job offer even quicker. Probably unlikely at the weekend. Well, regardless of a job offer or not, we are going to get one final game in charge. The semi-final of the Swedish Cup against your gardens. I've been keeping an eye on the Swedish transfer window, which has been really frustrating as well. If we go to the transfer history, since the last episode, or since the last game, sorry, one player on loan from Sevilla to Hammerby, who's good, but not as good as Van den Herk as an example. There's not a lot happening. It's really, really frustrating. For now, though, let's get through to the fixtures. Enjoy what should be a very nice game. Nurkapin or Elfsborg will be in the final in the other game. But let's see if we can come out on top and leave this club in a very good position. If we get through to the team selection, we've got the same side that played last week and they all look fine. So I think that's exactly what we're going to go for again. I don't feel much of a need to make changes on the bench apart from Grana, who's now back to fitness and can come on for Netterby. He is a quality right back and maybe a candidate to replace Weyberg at centre half given his last performance. But I do like the left and right foot of balance. So for now, we're going to leave it at that. I might actually bring Hadjin in at left back too. According to the assistant, they're slightly stronger. So we're going to stick with that change as well. It means Jolson is between the sticks. Correa and Hadjin the fullbacks with Weyberg and Vidal. What a superstar at centre half. Isn't really improving any greater now though. I think he probably needs the move to get that next bit of development. In midfield, it's Alma, Jed, Henriksen and Lingman as the three, with Lerpa, Ali and of course Van den Herk up front. Five goals already for him. He's been a superstar this season. At 30 years of age now, time's ticking for him, so hopefully he can deliver the goods today. Into the semi-final we go, your garden's away. Let's enjoy this moment, because it might be our last one with this team. And here we go. One change for both us and our host today. Just seeing if there's familiar names in there. Not other than ones we've come up against before. Joel Asoro on the bench, actually. He used to play for Sunderland. Someone in England, I'm sure of it. But let's go and get through to the first half and through the tunnel interview. 27,000 here. It's a wonderful atmosphere. It's a packed stadium. It's a perfect way to sign off if we can get the win. But what we wanted to see was these top Swedish sides really challenging us. And hopefully today that will happen. But through the first half we go... I've just noticed another recognisable name now, Bruno Gaspar. Where do I know that name from? Maybe Fiorentina. I've definitely managed him somewhere before. But regardless, I keep getting distracted. Ten minutes in, nothing's happened. Wow, that was a contender for worst first half we've seen in this save. No shots, none on target. One for your gardens, no highlights. 0 0.05 expected goals. What on earth was that and where has it come from? Uh, unlike the last episode where we played AIK, this is a bit more like the group stage games. So we've told the lads we want to exact revenge on your gardens. We're going to go a bit more positive. We need something quickly because this has been atrocious so far. We've still not mustered a shot. We're going to try and encourage the lads in a minute because where is the improvement? Where is the forward thinking? Where is the attempt to win the match? Weyberg's picked up a knock, but we're still playing with Correa. Goes long to Van den Herk, who flicks down for Tahar Ali. Lingman tries to release him, but that's not a good ball. And Gaspar intercepts for Johnson. And Eriksson, keeping the ball at the back here. At least we've seen a highlight. That's an improvement on one of our recent Hemel videos, as Johnson picks the ball up to Eriksson. To Schuler. Breaks the lines really well there, and he's just run past Kasper Vidal. Puts it through to Suk. It's one-on-one. -on -one. He's dinked the keeper. 
and your gardens are one nil up. This is a problem for Helsingborg. We might be remembered by our last performance, and if we are, it's not going to be a good memory, is it? Because this has been atrocious. Let's go attacking. Let's just try and chase the game. We'll make a few changes in a moment too. The big pitch probably not helping either. We're used to having a fairly condensed one. As Weyberg wins a header on halfway for Tahar Ali. Got two up in support but it's forced backwards. Good marking to Hendrickson. Lerper to Lingman. Van den Herk makes the run. He's in behind the defender. And Anthony Van den Herk never lets us down in the big game. Left footed finish. Brilliant one into the far corner. And it's 1-1. Just like that we're back on terms. Now let's go and make some changes because the two wingers again have been awful. So I'm going to bring on Kaid and Sega, the youngsters. And we're also going to go in central midfield. In fact, no, it's going to be Hadjin. I made a mistake starting him. He's the worst rated on the pitch and he's got a yellow card too. So on comes Tersic. That's how it stays. I think we only get three changes. So we're going to have to leave it at that. One shot on target, one goal. At least we've come back into the game a bit. Five minutes remaining. It stays one all. Asoro is on the former Sunderland man. We've got four minutes of stoppage time to avoid extra time. But it's not going to happen. A terrible game of football is going to an extra 30. I'm sure that's not what the fans who are here today want to see. Because it has not been exciting viewing at all. It's nil-nil in the other one. It looks like that's going all the way to. There's just nothing happening. Even going attacking, we're showing no intent here. We're going to encourage the lads. The fitness is completely gone from some of these. And we haven't got any more subs. It's a weird competition, not even having a fourth sub in extra time. And it's some of the penalty takers who are most tired. That gives me a huge amount of concern. We've got two minutes of normal time remaining, or extra time I should say. And we've now got a corner kick, but we're not going to see it. And we are going to finish our time at Helsingborg, if we get the job we've applied for. With a penalty shootout for a place in a final. Hendrickson, Van den Herk, Lingman, the star three. After that, we'll probably just pick the calm ones. Back in a moment for the first spot kick. And here we go. It is your gardens to take first. Eriksson steps up. Can Jolson be a hero? I mean, he dived out the way before he'd even finished his run up there. Let alone before the ball was struck. As Hendrickson comes up first for us. Absolutely shattered. But the regular penalty taker. And he proved why he shouldn't be. Because we should have trusted our judgment on someone who's tired. Hendrickson has missed. It was a poor penalty. It was weak. It was feeble. And it was easily saved. And now it's 2 0 your gardens. We're about to finish on a whimper. It's always these ones, isn't it? Van den Herk is second up for us. Has to score virtually at this stage already. Steps up right footed. Puts it in the top corner. Brilliant penalty kick from him. Bengtsson is next up for the hosts. If they score all three then we're in big trouble, given the early miss as well, and it's straight in, Jolson maybe should have got there, wasn't too far to his right hand side, but benefit of the doubt, it was hit fairly powerfully, and here comes Lingman, been a star for so long, saved by the keeper, straight down the middle, that is a pathetic pen, 3-1, and now all four of these have to go our way, I think we have to accept we're probably out here, Jagarden step up for their fourth penalty, Although, no penalty takers coming yet. It's Bruno Gaspar. And if he scores, we're out of the Swedish Cup. What a way to finish. You couldn't write it, could you? Gaspar, right-footed. Jolson doing a dance. Gets nowhere near it. And it's 4-1 on penalties. That was an awful effort. We've actually done pretty well in penalty shootouts with Helsingborg. But not today. Could be finishing on a whimper. Now, we really need that drop offer to lift our spirits. Back in a moment. Well... What can I say? We finish on controversy. And we finish with what might be an alarming sign for my plan. Because the worst side loaded in Denmark at the moment have rejected us after an interview. They have gone for Peter Sorensen instead. A man who's already been sacked in this football manager save from another club. And we are now not going to be moving to Danish football on the bottom of the second tier. That doesn't bode well for us trying to get another job. Of course, perhaps teams in sort of Iceland or Finland or other areas in the Nordic region might have a slightly lower reputation, but that is a huge alarm bell. Considering we've just won the Swedish Premier Division title, we've managed in Europe to the final qualifier. I do find it a little bit harsh that we've been rejected there. But we have. 
And that means that as it stands, we will be starting the season with Helsingborg. And I guess given the fact we've lost in the Swedish Cup semi-final, we might end up with a very big surprise and a nasty one. Because if we start to fall down the table with this club, the board expects us to be in the top three. Then maybe our chances at other jobs disappear completely. So if we go and have a look at the job centre, there are no other jobs in this area about at the moment. We're keeping our eyes firmly fixed on a job security and... There's something a little bit interesting going on. Remember we got rejected by Luton in November? Well, their job is insecure again and they are in a big relegation scrap. So maybe, just maybe, the original plan could happen yet. If not, if we look at the insecure jobs, you can see Adents and Horsens, both in Denmark's top tier. They're both insecure at the moment. But other than that, there's not a huge amount about. There's another one there in a the second tier in Denmark, but... Given the fact we've been rejected by the side bottom of the league that are semi-pro with the lowest reputation, we might have some difficulty getting a job. So to try and help that, I am going to ask to start a coaching course just to try and increase our reputation. I'm not sure it's going to work out because I've obviously asked to leave recently, but that's where we're going to leave it. As it stands, we are going to be back for transfer deadline day and the first game of the league season, which is against last season's closest rivals in Hammerby. We've actually, on paper, got an awful start to the season. Albeit they're all at home, three of our first four games are against Hammerby, Nurkapin and Malmo. Two of the European sides were big money and, of course, last season's closest challengers. So, if you're looking forward to that, seeing how we get on or whether we get another job in the meantime, then please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. I'm going to be honest with you, I thought it was a formality. I wasn't expecting to be here at the end of the episode. But let me know in the comments what you think of that fiasco. Subscribe down below to stay up to date with this one. We'll be back here in two days' time after the Hemel save returns tomorrow. Keep your eyes peeled for a new top three every Sunday at 6 p.m. There's links in the eye above to all the key playlists, the Twitch channel, football podcast, and merchandise store in the eye above and above my head now is the top three playlist please do give it a go i'll see you back here in a couple of days time who on earth knows what's going to happen next